Hey everybody, today we will talk about set timeout. Set timeout is a JavaScript function that allows you to schedule the execution of a piece of code after a specified time delay. This time delay will be in milliseconds. If you want a delay of 1 second, 1 second is equal to 1000 milliseconds. 2 seconds are equal to 2000 milliseconds. Let me give you some examples to help you understand. Imagine we're creating something called a hello function. Inside this hello function, I want to show the message hello world. To do this, we can use the console.log command. Now, outside the function, let's use another function called setTimeout. Inside the setTimeout function, we need to provide two things. First, we put the hello function, but don't use parentheses with hello. The second thing is the time. I want the hello world message to appear after 3 minutes, and we know that 3 minutes is the same as 3000 milliseconds. So, we wait for 1000, 2000, and 3000 milliseconds before showing the message. Now, let's write something on the console. Type console.log and inside it, write start. After that, copy this line and paste it at the end. Change the text to end. When you save this program, you'll notice that start and end show up first. Then, after waiting for 3 seconds, hello world appears. The set timeout function allows you to schedule the execution of a piece of code after a specified time delay. To move further, let's clear this code. Now, we'll try something new. We want to have a button on the web page, and when I click it, a pop-up will appear after a while. First, go to the HTML document and add a button tag. Write some text on the button like press me. When someone clicks this button, a function will be triggered. Add the onClick attribute and write the function name, which will be my function. So, when someone clicks the press me button, the my function will be called. Now, go back to the JavaScript file. Let's make a function. Use the word function and pick a name for it. We'll call it the alert function. This function will show a pop-up with the text happy birthday. For the pop-up, use the alert method and write the text you want to display, like happy birthday. Now, create another function named my function. Inside this function, use the set timeout method. Call the alert function here, and this function will be triggered after 3000 milliseconds. 1000, 2000, 3000, and there you go. Happy birthday pops up. We also have another function we can use with set timeout. To do this, let's create a variable using the let keyword. Name it interval ID. Essentially, the set timeout function gives us an ID and we have stored it in this interval ID. We can use it to stop the code from running. Now, we have the clear timeout function. In this method, use the interval ID variable to stop the execution of the code. You might have noticed that nothing happened and the pop-up didn't show up. This is because the clear timeout function stops the set timeout function from running. You can get the ID returned by the set timeout method. Just use the interval ID variable in the console.log. Every time I click the press me button, it will give me a new ID. Now, let's clear all the code. I'll show you another example with two buttons. One button starts the counter, and the other stops it. In between these buttons, there's an input field where our counter will be displayed. Go to the HTML file. We need three tags here. First, create a button. I want this button to display start count. Use the onClick attribute and write the function name that will be triggered when someone clicks on this button. Next, add the input tag. Set its type to text and give it the ID demo. Now, we need one more button. This button will stop the counter. Use the onClick attribute. Write the name of the function its name will be stop count. When someone clicks on this button, the stop count function will be triggered. Our HTML code is done. Let's go back to the JavaScript file. Create a variable called counter and set it equal to zero. Add another variable named timeout. Create one more variable named timeron and set it equal to zero. 
Now, let's create functions. First, the time count function. This function will display numbers in the input field and update them. Use document.getElementById to select the input tag with the ID demo. Now, change the value of it to the counter. Then, increase the counter variable by 1 in the next step. After that, the timeout variable will be set equal to the setTimeout method. Pass the time count function here with a 1 second delay. The first line inside this function will display the value of the counter variable in the input field. The second line will increase the value of counter by 1. The next line will call the same function after every 1 second. In the HTML, we have assigned the start count function to the start button. Now, let's write the code for this function. The function is named start count. I will set an if condition with an exclamation mark before timer on. The timer on variable is used to determine whether a timer is currently running or not. If its value is zero, it means timer on is false. And this condition will be true if timer on is false. Now, change the value of timer on to true by setting it equal to one. Call the time count function here. Now, let's create the function for the stop button. The name of the function will be stop count. You already know the method to stop the execution, clear timeout. Use the timeout variable here. This function will change the value of timer on, it will be equal to zero. If I click on the start button, the counter is running, and the number is updating after one second. If I click the stop button, the numbers that are currently moving will immediately stop. If you find it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos.